Welcome to the Smart Women in Business podcast with me, your host, Jane Mackay. We've got big ideas for small business. Hello and welcome to the Smart Women in Business blog and podcast. Today I'm talking to Helen Flitcroft. Helen is a mindset coach specialising in subconscious reprogramming for gritty entrepreneurs with kids at home. Her story is that of an expat mum moving from Australia to New Zealand and trying to bring up a very young family alone in a foreign country while transitioning from a business that was no longer a passion to creating a business that is her soul's passion. Welcome to the show, Helen. Thank you so much, Jane. It's a pleasure to be here. So your kids are obviously not with you today? Kindy and school. Hooray, so are mine. Unless the phone rings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Oops, that's, that's fine. Phones, phones can ring. My, my phone's always there, just in case. Anyway, so tell me about your business journey. We, you've had quite an interesting um, journey to this point. Yeah, well, it's certainly been a journey. Um, so I come from a background in hospitality. So I was a, um, a chef in French restaurants and had a lot of success uh, within that role. And then, you know, I met my husband and thought, well, you know, working in restaurants is not really conducive to uh, starting a family, let alone looking after a family. So I'm like, well, you know, it's time. I've sort of achieved everything I wanted to achieve in, in that realm. And I thought, I'm going to set up a business. Uh, not knowing anything about setting up a business, as we do. Um, and so I thought, I'll set up a cooking school. And I did. And, you know, went through the, the first bump that I think everybody goes through when you, when you run classes and nobody signs up for the first class. I was like, oh, my God. Um, but and you go quite, cry. Yeah, you're like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> um, but then, then things um, improved dramatically really quickly. So um, it was back in the days when those, um, you know, those, oh, what are they called? We have them over here in, in New Zealand now called, um, oh, they're like vouchers, not vouchers, but you, it's like Red balloon, coupons, like experience. coupons, groupons, that sort of stuff. Yeah, ex like experience vouchers. Yeah, kind of, kind of, and and you would um, you would put a discount out, and this yeah. this other platform would advertise it for you. So, so one of the reps came along and said, "Hey, should we do this?" Like, yeah, all right, okay, not knowing really anything, and we sold like seventeen grand worth of cooking classes in one day. <laughs> so, How's that for scaling? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here I am, just going ka ching ka ching ka ching, watching watching all these these sales come in. Um, but I also managed to fall pregnant at exactly the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am yeah so here I am delivering all of these cooking classes like back to back to back to back to months and you can see my, my belly yeah, first like, trimester going I'm dying <laughs> yeah I can't smell eggs I can't <laughs> smell things. trying to do cooking classes um but you know everything was really successful it was great and then you know I had Thomas we moved to Brisbane um I was in Perth at the time and Oh, yeah, I so I started thinking about maybe, you know, I might start up cooking classes again. And there was a, a little a little cooking school nearby and I thought I'd try one of those classes and it was just impossible. Like my, my son was a really early walker at eight months. So oh. he was like going all over the place and he's I was so all... happy my kids were delayed. Like they're not they weren't delayed, <laughs> but they were really late. And I'm like, yeah. sixteen months, that's fine, buddy. That's fine. You just <laughs> stay there. No, I had the opposite. So oh, Thomas had all sorts of allergies and I'm in this kitchen and he's like doing things and playing in things and I'm like, what am I doing? Um <laughs> And at the same time, uh, a network marketing opportunity came across my, my way, actually. And my mum grew up in Amway, and I'd seen all of the personal development, and I'd read all the books and gone to the, gone to the, um, the, the uh, conventions, and I was like, oh, that's right. That's right. Personal development, growth, you know, motivation, mindset, all of that kind of stuff. And it was such a wonderful product, and I loved it. And I said to my husband, this is what I'm going to do. And he was like, no, you're not. <laughs> uh yeah and yeah yeah i i am quite you know so we butted heads with that for, for quite some time and it caused a lot of angst in the marriage it really really did you know being told that i can't do what my heart's calling me to do um in that time we also moved to new zealand so that's when things got really difficult you know so i probably fell pregnant with my second child since we arrived and um yeah, I really wanted to, to follow my passion because this is deep inside is telling me this is what I want to be doing. 
And my husband going, no. And eventually I gave it up, you know, for the sake of the marriage. Um, but nonetheless, there's this thing inside of me that's wanting to help people, you know, step into their greatness, follow their passion, uh, empower them financially. So, you know, what I did in the end was I started my cooking school back up, even though I've got this thing inside, right? Because it was approved activity and being successful in the past and da, 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 da. so, and everyone loves the cooking Food. school. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's just a feel good thing and everyone loves it. And, and, you know, so I was running it and it was okay, but you know, it wasn't really what my heart was calling me to do. So I started thinking, Hey, maybe I'd like to be a coach and, um, started looking at all the different modalities out there. I didn't spend a lot of time making sure that whatever I trained myself in was going to be the very best that would serve my clients. Um, I signed up for a course which was amazing. And part of that was mindset. It was part strategy, part mindset. And the mindset aspect of it absolutely blew me away. So I've been personal development junkie for a long time by then, consuming a lot of stuff. And then this came along and I just saw like my subconscious stuff evaporating. And I was like, holy crap, what is this? And I got myself... Yeah, the thing I've stumbled across. Yeah, yeah like how yeah. could I be so lucky to actually find this thing? Because it was really new in the world. And um, yeah, I got certified. I was accepted to be certified and trained for six months really hard doing that. And yeah, I've been certified as a coach for about two years now. Wow. So, yeah, slowly transitioning out of that other business, which I still do a bit of, and we still will grow, but it'll be in a different way. Um, but this is what I do full time now. I'm so happy to be finally doing this full time and really being who I'm meant to be. It's, it's funny because when... As women, uh, we do spend a lot of our time doing what we think we should mm. um, instead of what we actually want to do. And it's rarely that we put, I want to do this, um, so I am going to do it. Yeah. You know, put everybody else aside, everyone else's priorities. And that's a really difficult thing for a lot of women to do because we have so many conflicting priorities. Yeah, exactly. So um, obviously that that move to New Zealand um, was a big trigger for change for you. Mm. But, and then you, you stepped into this coaching role. How did you finally, like, so you, you a network marketing opportunity, uh, because I, fun fact, I used to work at um, Tupperware Australia's head office. Right. Working in their sales and marketing department. So I know that, um, you know, that, that network marketing, it's a, it's a good model if you can do it correctly. Yeah. But so the personal development aspect of that um, was what attracted you to that. So how do you then create a model that's going to work with your clients? So around your coaching, how do you, how do you work that with living in New Zealand? Do you have clients here? Do you have clients in New Zealand? Do you have clients? I have clients in Texas, you know, how yeah. do, is it just zoom or what do you do? Yeah, how do you work? Yes. Make it work? Yeah. Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> yeah, that's how I make everything it's work. It's like we are here. I've got I've got clients all over the place, and really, it's just a case of time zones more than anything else. Germany's a tricky one for me. Yeah, Germany and yeah, East Coast, um, Eastern Standard Time is a little bit tricky as well. I'm mm -hmm. finding so so generally a lot of my clients um, saying that I've got a, quite a few in our group programs that are in the UK, but they just listen to the recordings. Um, but generally, sort of Australia, New Zealand, um, and then some in the US as well. Because I know that um, people who are listening to this, some people haven't started their business yet and they're like, well, how, mm. how, do I, how am I going to make that work? If, you know, and, that, and that is the beauty of it. Time zones are that tricky one. So, yeah, people will work with you, though, from, from anywhere. Absolutely. I'm in the middle of nowhere in Australia and I have clients all over the place. They just Isn't find you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So how do you manage your life then with two small children and... Um, you know, your family and your marriage and mm. cook. So that's handy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose. Um, <laughs> it is, it is management. It very much is management. So, you know, now that Sophie, Sophie goes to a wonderful kindy and it's a, it's a nine to three. So it's school hours. So that made a big difference mm. once he had gone and Thomas was at school as well. Um, but I'm very, very, I'm very mindful of my time. I think firstly, you know, having gone through my first business, not knowing what I was doing and trying to expand on this business model that I didn't really understand. It had, I had no understanding of how businesses work and how they scale. 
And so, you know, taking all the lessons that I learned from that one, you know, really building into what I do next, a model that is designed to scale, that I can operate efficiently, um, that does give me flexibility. So I was very, very careful about that from the beginning. Um, but nonetheless, I still need to manage my time um, mm. really well. So I guess it's, it's a case of I always plan my goals. You know, this is what I'm going to achieve. And I break it down step by step by step by step right down to the day. Um, I can't reach it with my gadget arms, but I could like whip it out here, my daily plan. This is my day book. Everything. Yeah. If it's not in here, it doesn't get done. Well, that's it. Yeah. So mine's, mine's just over there. But okay. it's very meticulously planned. Um, and Do you right allocate to- time? I allocate yeah, right. priority. Yeah. Um, and usually when I'm doing that in the morning, I'll be like, okay, and I've put my appointments down too. So I've kind of got my time in my head, like how much time I've got to get this stuff done. Um, So yes, very much planning. But then as far as like husband time, I've got time in the, I've got the certain (laughs) nights, you know, that is, that's our time, you know, and I give that time for him. And I literally weekends, mornings is for me to sleep in or just do whatever, pajama, pajamas till lunchtime. Um, And then, the afternoon is family, similarly on Sunday. So it's very structured um, and I find that works. I'm so creative that I need that structure. If I don't have that structure, the chaos. Who I am. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not work in the evenings. Like I'm, if I don't, if I work in the evenings, I don't sleep and I'm less productive the next day. Yep. So it's about finding what works for your, your personality and how you work. Like some people work better at night. Yeah. Whereas I'd rather get up at 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah, and I try not to do both. Uh, so I think you know, it's sometimes it's very much like having a baby. I think you've got these push phases and rest phases, and push phases and rest phases. And sometimes you just need to push, and sometimes you just got to drag that shit over the line. Yeah, and I say that. Um, the but, last swear on my podcast. Okay, <laughs> we should have cleared that up to start with. Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you do just need to buckle down and and get stuff over the line, um, but it's not sustainable. So I've kind of got this philosophy of counterbalance, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm, my tendency is to just go hammer stuff out, but then I'll stop and like just not do anything for a day or two if I have to sometimes, um, or the weekends, my weekends and my weekends and I don't work and it just, just that time is my time to just relax. Yeah. Um, so that, that philosophy serves me really well as well, especially in a world where you get all these messages coming like balance, 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 must have balance. And I feel I'm the most balanced person I know, but I don't really believe in balance in that, in that way. But that's yeah. just my personality. Yeah. I, I mean, I work in marketing, so social media is always there for me. It's never, and that's one of my big problems is that, because you're always on, especially as an entrepreneur, you're always trying to build your business. You're always looking for opportunities. You're always seeing in the Facebook groups, the opportunities. Um, and that's one of the really hard things. I think when you work for yourself is to, to put that line in the sand and go, right, that's it. That's it for today. Yeah. Um, and I think that if we do go too hard, you know, burnout is a very real thing. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. So, and I think managing the, our time um, is a key key way to avoid burnout because I've been there. It's not fun. No. So, yeah. 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 And you're just exhausted and you have nothing left to give your family or, or yourself. So avoid burnout people. Um, yeah. So <laughs> drink water. It helps. Drink lots of water. Um, <laughs> what does a great day in the office look like for you? Yeah, so this I was, uh, is a great question and this is like a great day in the office. So usually it's, it's up at five um, and then I will journal. I'll do a lot of journaling and planning. Um, or journaling. Tell yes. me about journaling just as an aside. Journaling. So I, I so open my journal. A lot, but I've never, I don't really understand the mechanics of it. Okay, so, so I'll tell you my system. So I get up and I open my journal and I first go through a little bit of an inventory of how I'm feeling. You know, so the listeners could do this too and it's, the model is called Permash. Um, P-E-R-M-A-A-S-H. I've adapted it from this um, PERMA model from positive psychology. But it's like, um, and the question is, how satisfied am I in the following areas? So P is positive emotions, and I give myself a a number from zero to 10. It's not how much I think I should be, how satisfied am I personally with my positive emotions? The next one is my engagement. 
in life in general. Um, then R, relationships. And then M, money. And then A, achievements. Um, the other A, my parents, that was a big thing for me. As mums, you know, we tend to <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so, you're like, when you, when you haven't had children, you're like, why do they do that? Why, why do they let why, themselves go like that? Why are they wearing activewear all the time? Because <laughs> it's easy to wash. And yeah, you don't well, so we know now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then S is spirituality or spirits. If you're not really re not religious, but you know, spirit is just, yeah. it's just spirits. Who you are. And um, H is your health and hydration. So first thing, I just give my little myself a little little gauge, and I check to see how I'm feeling, and I like look at any that you know are dipping down a little bit. So I know, well, I need to focus on that. Um, the, and then the final question with that is, well, how satisfied am I, you know, on this journey? Like, even if my relationship is at a five, you know, in general, how happy am I still, you know, on my journey in general? Because that's really important to be really grateful for where you are on your journey. Um, so then I, I say, well, what am I grateful for? I know what went well. So I review my day from yesterday. It's so powerful. So powerful. Because as entrepreneurs, we're always forward focused, you know. So to actually look back and go, oh, that great thing happened and that great thing happened and that great thing happened and that great thing happened is really quite a revelation sometimes. Um, I ask myself what I'm grateful for, what do I appreciate, which I, there's a distinction for me between those two. Um, a good question, how can I be more excited for my clients today? You know, I love that question. Um, I kind of like, I ask myself, what do I wish for the world? Uh, what do I wish for others? What do I wish for myself? Um, and sometimes I have like a statement like um, I serve world-class clients and it feels however it feels to me. So contented, um, relaxed, excited. Um, yeah. And that's, that's sort of my process. But if I'm having a shit day, I might just like, oh, I feel like crap, you know, and you just yeah. put it out there and um, yeah, I find it really powerful. It stops you processing it internally once you get things out, I suppose. To it's, a degree. It's, yeah, yeah, it's very powerful to just own your emotions mm. and be real with them, um, you know, and sometimes it just helps to say, hey, I'm just feeling a bit blah today, mm. and that's okay. <laughs> with a five and a seven-year-old, in your case, and a five and an eight-year-old, in my case, I do have very blah days. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So, back to your great day. You start with journaling. Oh, yeah. So, start with journaling, um, and... Then I get that done, and the kids are up, and it's like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And da, da, da. Yeah. Uh, school, I get the want that spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Can I watch TV now? It's not, it's Sophie's turn, it's my turn. Um, so get everyone off to school, husband off to work, all of that lunches stuff. Um, come home, walk the dog. So then, then I get my exercise in, um, start my day at 10, 10 you know, 10 o'clock. Ideally, if I'm back by 10, some meditation, um, listening to some visualizations, and then whatever I've got for my 10.30 appointment. So um, do that. And then usually around 12 o'clock, I'm doing some kind of live um, interview or something like that, some kind of social media thing. And then in the afternoon, I'm either um, running coaching sessions or just doing whatever needs doing, Yeah, really. So... That's, that's kind of my perfect day. Um, hmm. Yeah. Sending out invoices. <laughs> Don't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> Very important. Well, well, yes, I have Acuity, which does a lot of that stuff up front for me, which is, uh, which is great. And yeah, I have a lady a who's an angel and people need invoices. So I just go, no. <laughs> uh, ah, righto. No, I'm still doing it myself. But anyway, I have, I have a great app. I have Wave, which is free. And I've heard it's amazing. And then works out all my GST for me. I love you. Yes. Um, yep. Yes. Yes, it is amazing. Anyway, so on to that, mm -hmm. what tools do you help, do you use to help yourself be more productive? Yeah. So acuity, acuity, I love, I love, I love is the most adaptable thing. So especially when I was running um, my other business full time, I had like multiple cooking classes and multiple staff and blah, 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 going on there. Plus my coaching at the same time was in this transition. Um, it just managed everything for me, managed the payments, managed, I could email different people. And uh, it was just the best thing in the world. I still love Acuity. Uh, ClickFunnels I use. So I found that really great for creating courses and automating things. Um, really powerful tool there. Um, 
my my own daily planning system that I use. It's not actually it's not like software, but it's a it's still a tool. My own system, yeah. <laughs> it's not my own system, but it's the system that I use. Yeah. Um, uh, Facebook. <laughs> we <laughs> love it. Tool. Yeah, it's a yeah. great tool. I meet so many clients on Facebook, and that's not through my page. That's through groups you know yeah. and you can ask questions in groups and learn so much and meet amazing people and you know facebook groups have changed my life absolutely and even even how i just connect with my clients like i deliver my, most of my programs you know through facebook at least that we've got a facebook group and we'll be doing zooms um you know i'm in touch with my my clients through voice messages and things like that uh, it's just like the ultimate tool if facebook went away i'd be like what am I going to do? Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. Then. Back to the drawing board. Figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. And I, I, I talk about people uh, having all their eggs in the social media basket. But at the same time, I mean, I would never recommend that someone runs their business entirely on Facebook. But, um, yeah. God, it's a great tool. It is. If your target audience is on there, you need to be there and you need to be active. But I, I described someone because a client of mine doesn't necessarily get her clients from Facebook and said the other day, do I need a Facebook page? And I said, well, it's a bit like having a pet. You need to tend to it. You need mm. to fit to it and you, it needs being looked after every day. So, yeah. but Facebook groups are amazing. Yes. Um, so obviously mindset is crucial in, in business. So what's your sort of number one or two or five in your case, probably uh, <laughs> tip for entrepreneurs at each stage of their journey with mindset mm, okay so each stage so first stage the dreaming stage when you've just got an idea you know so I suppose it, it sort of it starts down here so the first tip is okay when you create create from a place like you're a child and you're playing you know it's kind of like I'm giving you do you like chocolate cake will you eat a chocolate cupcake if I give one to you yep okay so okay. yes yeah, all right, so <laughs> your cake. And not only is this a beautiful chocolate cupcake, but it's also got chocolate fudge icing on it, okay? And I'm giving that to you, and you're like, bonus. Yay! And, and then I say, okay, Jane, like, here's a whole bunch of sprinkles and da 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 and you can just play with it, you know? So at that point, you're already in this gratitude. And then you're like, wow, do you see how your mind just opens to possibility, you know? And it's to be in that that mindset not in a problem solving mindset like i need to create this thing to get away from that problem mm. you know it's real that's really important because so long as you're you're in the space of resisting that thing and creating this thing because you're resist resisting that thing that thing is just going to loom large and it's going to be there and you're always going to limit yourself by that thing you know oh i've got away from that thing and oh i've succeeded <laughs> you know? but why don't I feel happy yeah. yeah 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 exactly so it's kind of it's a it's a it's an inspirational thing it bubbles up from here it usually comes with a feeling of desire mixed with fear and that's the growth oh feeling <laughs> yeah. but if the desire is there you know so I would say listen to that little thing the little whisper that thing the thing that bubbles up but also be smart be humble be cautious because business can really, really, really hurt. Um, <laughs> so yeah, get a lot of advice, you know, be prepared, seek out the devil's advocates, be prepared to have your ideas shot to pieces, you know, um, don't take that personally. No, no. Yeah. And we'll talk about that, you know, <laughs> at the next phase as well. Um, but I think it's, it's that be courageous, be in that space of creation and but also be cautious as well definitely mm. Mm. build it to scale <laughs> yeah work out where the traps are going to be ask the people who've already done that make sure you get your advice from the right people too mm. um yeah have they achieved because your friends and family are going to say yeah that's an amazing idea or they're going to tell you that it sucks and you'll never never achieve anything so find the person who's already achieved the things actually qualified to give you the right advice you mm. know listen to them mm. Absolutely. So uh, second stage is going to be a startup. So what's important there? Um, putting your pride aside, putting perfectionism aside, 
going into productivity, getting a feedback loop, put it out there, test. It's not about you. It's about your clients. It's about, is my product serving my clients? You know, and just put it out there and see if, if it sticks and if it doesn't, then iterate and iterate and iterate and kind of be okay with the, oh my God, it's changing all the time sort of mentality a little bit. Um, but that's important. It's all about information. It's all about feedback and getting stuff out there because so many people will get stuck in perfectionism. There's a fine line. There's a fine line between putting something out there and just going, oh my God, that's just so shit. And just everything having to be perfect and you're not actually getting it out there and not getting the feedback. Back. Done is better than perfect is one of the best things I've ever heard. What was that? What was the done? Done is better than perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And be in the mindset of I'm a producer, not a consumer. If you sit there and go, am I more producer than consumer? Am I more consumer than producer? You're like, mm, I've got a problem here because I'm supposed to be putting stuff out to market. <laughs> <laughs> if right? you're a consumer or oh, tricky. Yeah, well, that's it. If you're a consumer, not a producer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's always good just to take that inventory, how much am I consuming versus producing. Uh, next stage is that sort of things kind of establish themselves a little bit. And that's where I would say self-mastery really comes into play. Like all of these things are important, but, you know, you start to get a little bit more hard nose. You start to take on more responsibility. You start to say no to things. Um, that's powerful. Saying yeah. no is powerful. Yeah. And you get to a point where you just have to. Um, and you've probably made a shitload of mistakes by this time as well. So <laughs> yeah, people, you're going you're gonna to make mistakes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And team becomes, team becomes like big at this point. You can't, you can only achieve so much on your own. And who you are, your reactivity, um, your own personal power, that's going to ripple out into into everything that you do, it's going to, um, it's kind of, it's your presence. It's almost like pre-sent it where it's it comes before you, you know, it has a lot to do with your influence and who, which team players, a players, cause only please work with a players, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> They're worth waiting for. They're worth fighting for. Um, yes, you have to be cool to be kind sometimes. Um, but those people will only work with you if you're an A player yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing is just out there in the ether. So it's really about self mastery. It's working out, well, what is personal power for me? Um, who am I, you know, who am I really? And healing the subconscious blocks and the triggers and things like that so that you can communicate and you're an awesome leader. Um, yeah, I would say that would be the, and, and working out where your piece is finding out where peace is and how to access that regardless of what else is going on around there. Cause you're kind of in it for the long haul at that point. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. I've been in business for 10 years. Mm. It is, yeah. it's a slog and my business now doesn't look anything like how it started. Mm -hmm. So, and you do, you have to find the bits you love and then outsource the bits you don't. Yes. Like the house house point working for yourself. <laughs> like yeah. You're doing all the horrible bits. Exactly. That's not fun. Why would you? Yeah. No, you may as well go and work for someone else and get. Yeah. Something. Yeah, absolutely. So if your business is not, this is where people get stuck. They're like, Oh, I really don't enjoy doing this, but they haven't got a model that's actually serving them and they can't afford to get someone to come in and, and do that. Well, you just need to take a really hard look at your business model and maybe make some adjustments there. So I'll just throw that out there for anyone that's kind of in that space. Don't kid yourself. It has, yeah. to, has to work. Yeah. Um, you have to be making money or it's a hobby. Yeah. Or <laughs> you're digging yourself into a hole. Um, not much fun. No. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to have those conversations well effectively with yourself or if you have you a coach, mm. but it is difficult, but you have to be honest. Yeah. You can't kid yourself and you can't go along thinking something's working if you putting yourself in a hole. So yeah. Yeah. it's hard. So uh, my next question, which sort of ties into that is how do you deal with the bad days? Yeah. Obviously you uh, have journaling and yeah, I'm a big, big advocate of the power cry. Um, <laughs> I'm a power napper. Oh, I, have I, to get power cry. I, have, I just don't have a rest. <laughs> just turn off. Wish yeah. I could do that. Um, no, I just have a cry. I will just be like, blah. You know, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of feeling your emotions. So yes, I do subconscious.
just reprogramming. But, you know, just like driving a car, you want to learn how to drive a manual first before you go to the automatic. So emotions, manual, auto, manual emotions is they come in waves. Know that they come in waves. And, you know, it's okay to feel it. And to just go, hey, I'm really feeling whatever it is, name it, and allow anything that wants to come up to come up and it can be a bit embarrassing and you know hopefully you're at home and whatever but I've got no poker face up mine has come out in all kinds of embarrassing situations but that's all right <laughs> um, we're big girls they can deal with it <laughs> yeah it's all right um and just know that it will pass and on the other side of that is this beautiful sense of peace mm. you know Enjoy. and yeah yeah and it's kind of like once that has gone and you're just like oh and you know, you've had enough bad days that you know there's going to be good days. And you get to this stage in business too that you start to like really relish the learnings. Like, <laughs> this really hurts right now, but, but you I know. Wonder what, wonder what lesson this is teaching me, universe. Yeah. <laughs> some good ones. Or it can, be, it can be taking those great leaps, which are really uncomfortable. Mm. And, oh, I, you know, I have to do this for my business. This is terrifying. Yeah. It's so uncomfortable. And as humans, we're not designed to do things that are challenging and uncomfortable and scary. No. no. But you're going to do a lot of that in business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's our old subconscious mind just wants us to be safe. Yeah. Just be safe and do what's proven. You know, yeah. if broke is proven, just give me more of that. Yeah. Please. I've just, I've just read um, Dr. Joe Dispenza's Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Yes. And I'm just about to embark on the meditations because I've had kids here a lot lately, unwell They're children. massive, those meditations. Oh, so I'm <laughs> like, ooh, got to do that. But I'm like, I know it's going to be challenging. Mm. But as, as he says, we're not designed to be in the challenging, in the scary, in the unsafe feeling. So we're just at this point in, in as humans yeah. where we can challenge ourselves to that point and go, it's not survival. You know, we're not going to die if we do this stuff. Mm. And our brain, our subconscious brain doesn't know that. No, it doesn't. You know, so that's one of the big things I do with people is we help them to step into, it's almost like creating future memories. So, you know, if you were to suddenly drop yourself into a whole heap of success that you're not used to, your body is going to kick up uh, your physiology and your psychology and sabotage you to just get back to where you were, please, because that's how I like it. Self-sabotage, um, huge. Yep in in yep. business mm. so we do a lot of like visualizations um, flooding our bodies with the emotions of how it would be you know when we've achieved a thing so so we're kind of training we're training our physiology to actually you know accept these new states of being these new new identities um because it's it is big this 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 subconscious thing is massive you know if we don't actually choose to work with it it's just going to keep pulling us back over and over and over again mm. Mm. and you have to go through the challenging bits get your body used to it's okay to be scared it's okay to feel challenged so mm. so um we talked about facebook groups um so how do you maintain your sense of community while working alone effectively i know you're like probably like me and spend all day talking to people but yeah i do spend a lot of time by myself mm. so i still haven't worked out if i'm an extrovert or an introvert you know I'm an and ambivert. <laughs> that's my i'm an ambivert but I'm not in the middle. I'm like extreme extrovert and extreme introvert. So yeah. when I want to be by myself, I just want to be by myself. And then I love being with people too. So yeah. take me to a party and I will party, but then I have to spend the next day not talking to people. Yeah. 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 Leave me alone. Yes. I'm in my yeah. yeah. So, so I don't, I have so much time. Smart. There's Lucy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi Lucy. Um, I got so much going on that I'm not really needing to worry about, um, alone time so I get I could probably do with more alone time so I've probably got more community in alone time at the moment so um, I don't know it's just being out there in the digital world really participating in groups um, adding value where you can um, you know I do a lot of group group work as well like I don't do that much one-on-one -on -one. most of the stuff I do is is group training it's what's scalable and I love the power that's in groups as well um, sorry about that <laughs> That's, that's called working from home people yes it's real yeah it really is home um she's getting old she's getting a bit more barky um yeah so i think it's i guess i just in, in the nature of my work i get out amongst people a lot 
Um, but when I was not in this line of work so much and when I was doing more of the cooking classes, which were more sort of one-off events, so it's a lot of work and then a big event and then a lot of work and then a big event, um, I would really need to be mindful to get out into town and go to networking events and go to networking lunches and just, um, yeah, otherwise I'd kind of just go a bit like rabbit holy cuckoo. <laughs> I had a six month sabbatical and my house was so clean and I went, I've got to get a job. <laughs> I'm not seeing enough humans. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. is tough when you're a mum and your children are young too. That is important to just, just grab the kids and turn along to like, I'd be breastfeeding at networking meetings and things like that. And you just have to, otherwise, you know, you're going to drown in that, that, what is the word? You kind of get a bit, cabin feverish mm. and you just get locked in your own thoughts and yeah i i mean i remember i my kids have come to meetings i had a week off when my son was born because i was like i'll go crazy if i don't work um so i would be like breastfeeding in the car and go into a meeting and then he'd throw up on me or he'd be crying or he'd poo and i'm like oh well and my clients are gorgeous they understand yeah um and that's part of being a mum in business but they respect you for it actually mm. yeah you know, and if they don't, they're not your people. You know? No, and I think, you know, the more we do it, the more it becomes normal. You know, Absolutely. so just go for it. Even if you're the first one, um, <laughs> you know, you'll have the, the older women there going, oh, I wish I could have done that, you know, but it wasn't even something that was even, they could even and contemplate. Yeah. yeah. You know, you couldn't, we didn't talk about breastfeeding. That didn't exist, you know, women and no. babies and anyway, yeah. we're lucky. We're so lucky. Breaking, Extremely lucky. Breaking down the barriers slowly. So Indeed. what is your why and what keeps you motivated in business? Oh, I'm one of those annoyingly always motivated people. Um, oh, God. <laughs> I barely uh, actually have, rarely have days where I'm not feeling motivated, but yeah. like my ultimate motivation is like, I want to go on holiday so I can be with my kids. Yeah. So to me, it's financial capability, I think. So ultimately, I'm just being who I am. So that's, that's like the ultimate motivation is being on the path that's meant for me. You know, that in itself is like a firecracker up my ass. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else and just leave me to my own devices and this is what I do. Mm. Um, but, you know, having moved, moved through being sort of an achiever and out there in the world and having a great job and a great income. And, you know, when I met my husband, we both had great incomes. We're doing all this amazing stuff. It's so fun. And then, um, <laughs> and then we had a child. Child and, and all the fun. <laughs> and, uh, and then another child. And then in New Zealand and even in Australia, you know, you get, we would get a little bit of money from the government just because I had babies. Um, but that's not the case over here. You know, so I, there was nothing. If I hadn't earned it myself. You didn't get it. I didn't get it. Or, you know, it came from my husband, but, you know, it was sanctioned activities. Yes, you can use it for that, but I'm not so sure about using it for that. You know, it was just, you know, so for me, it's Different system, yeah. financial, just financial capability and autonomy. Um, definitely. Mm. Definitely. That's big for me anyway. Mm. Um, Financial autonomy, I see, um, is so important for so many women because for many women, it's, it's freedom. It's freedom from relationships. It's freedom from so many like, burdens that, that because so many of us don't have that financial autonomy once exactly. we have had kids, especially. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I kind of wish I knew before <laughs> before <laughs> beforehand, yeah and how important it is to set up you know your financial capabilities um to set yourself up to be autonomous because you don't know what's going to happen in your life and you might find yourself suddenly in another country and you know my marriage has been hard but we've we've worked it out we're definitely over the hump as far as that goes so um anyone that's having having kids will do that to a marriage oh yeah moving countries having kids no mum or dad or sister oh. or anything just get please hold the baby or just best friend to go around to their house or anything it's so hard oh i can't imagine so, yeah <laughs> um so any of the expat mums out there i know i know i've been through it um oh, it's feeling you big time big yeah. time um so yeah autonomy financial autonomy just being understanding your own two feet because if you find yourself stuck and financially dependent on someone else like that can be a bit risky Oh, it is. It's massive. Definitely. And yeah. also, if they lose their job. 
yeah. where's the backup? So, you know, that's, yeah. Let's build our businesses, women. Yes, indeed. So um, what are your final tips for all the smart women in business across the world? Final tips for smart women in business, self-mastery, self-leadership. Find out who you are, you know, work out what power really means stand in your power and i've got if we can give stuff away i've got some something i can give away to help people i'll talk about that in a sec then so um yeah it's self-mastery and really heal that subconscious stuff go to those places it can be scary but on the other side of that is such a free psychology like i used to have all the the negative voices i used to be so hard on myself um you know and i i beat myself up for beating myself up, right? Um, I don't have any of this. guilt, it's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't have that anymore. And it's so freeing, uh, you know, and as entrepreneurs, we want to be able to focus and we want to use our mental energy as much as possible. So, so self-mastery, 100%. Um, so shall I, shall I talk about my, my thing? Yeah, yeah, I... yeah. I'll, um, just before you go into that, just let everyone know, I will put all your links and everything to what we're going to talk about in the show notes so everyone has access. Don't okay. Worry. Okay? Cool. Yep. Go nuts. <laughs> cool. All right. So what I have, and I mean, sometimes I sell it and sometimes I give it away depending on how I feel. But, um, <laughs> I was chatting to Jane. I was like, oh, no, let's just give it away. So I've created this mini mindset course, and it's called The Mumpreneur's Path to Power. And um, I've pretty much put everything, if I get one chance to change somebody's life, I've, I've bundled it into that course. So the first is, and it's two phases. So the first phase, we talk about personal power and using our conscious mind uh, to really step into a high performance mindset um, over any kind of situation that we feel we might not have control over. And then the second phase is the introduction to MAP, which is the subconscious reprogramming um, methodology that I, um, I practice. And we take a fear. So in the conscious process, we sort of identify a fear and then in the second phase, we actually um, we we go through this process, and uh, we actually start working on that fear, and hopefully it will just disappear. Yeah, I'm going to be signing up for this mindset course. <laughs> I work a Let lot of mindset, but I haven't done map. Yeah, it's cool. It's so amazing. The most the most amazing discovery of that is that there's like an aspect of a um, our consciousness software that has access to both our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. So it can heal itself, you know, just by command. It's the most incredible thing. Um, I'll give you one story. There's a lady um, that's running a little course and she came on this course and I gave her, gave her the, the mini mindset course to do part of the pre-work. And um, she was so terrified of doing Facebook lives that she had this old laptop that she used and she had a band aid across the camera. Like she was that, like did not want to be seen, did not want to be heard. Anyway, she does this course and she pulls the, she pulls the bandaid off and she, she's doing a live in a, in a private Facebook group. <laughs> she, she's actually just going out to like all of, all of Facebook. So it, it was kind of like a baptism by fire, but it was, it was just miraculous to see that, you know, um, and you don't always get massive results like that, but sometimes you do as well. Yeah. So we, we want to take it gently to start with. Um, but yeah, that's an introduction to that. And then I threw in a bunch of meditations and visualizations and things that I like as oh, well. Fantastic. So. Thanks so much. It's and as I stuff. said, I've put all the links in cause just mindset. So mindset is the first thing I teach in my marketing program yep. because it is basically the thing you need to nail. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can learn everything else. But if your mindset's not on where it needs to be, yeah, you're not going to get there. No, no longevity. No, and and fear, always fear. You'll live in a, a bad place of terrifying yeah. emotions all the time. Yeah, on that note as well. So self-mastery, hang around people that are doing what you want to do. Circle of influence is massive. You know, tweak your environment as much as you can um, to support yeah, you. Yeah, I talk about the five people around you. Mm, yeah. um and 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 i go that's why we have our facebook group because we have all these amazing supportive mm -hmm. people in there yeah. but you can go in there and go oh i'm having this or i'm doing this or what's happening here and then you've got these amazing uplifting people to help you yeah so, yeah yeah absolutely and podcasts if you're doing the dishes and the laundry or whatever stick a podcast in if you don't have a five-year-old as loud as mine 
Yeah, I take the yeah. car on the way to school pick up because then I can actually listen. However it works, yeah. Feed your mind. The they would, um, I can imagine my kids, if I walked around with headphones in, would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> be right. present, Mum. <sighs> anyway, I love my kids. I love them. Anyway, um, well, thank you, Helen. I will put all Helen's links um, in the show notes so everyone can master their mindset yeah yeah get onto it it's a great course really really great course um and i'm available you'll be able to connect with me if you need to um you know through that course so it's the best of the best that i had to give all lumped up into a nice little package so i really hope that it's valuable and and that if you grab it that you enjoy it thank you so much so it's been helen helen flitcroft on the smart women in business podcast thank you helen thank you jane You have been listening to the Smart Women in Business podcast. If you'd like to find out more about me, your host, Jane Mackay, visit janemackaycommunications.com.au.